Well, you know, speaking of, of Chris Brown, I mean, how did that, you know, collaboration come together? I know I've seen in other interviews, you, you refer to him as your little brother. How did that even, you know, begin? How did you guys even meet and start working together and songwriting together as well? Well, we had a lot of mutual friends on this first project mm -hmm. and that I missed out on. But on it, I, I was a part of the second project exclusive. Yes. Uh, and I did a song called Wanna Be On There. Mm. Uh, me and Chris used to always see each other because we had mutual friends. Mm -hmm. So I, I had the opportunity of, of presenting Wanna Be to him. He came in and, and knocked it out and made the album. And then uh, we just developed a bond from that. And we just hung out. We used to go play ball together and, and just, you know, do be at different events. Mm -hmm. but, you know, we just always hung around each other. Our birthdays are close, so we, you know, we're we're a lot alike. And so he he, he became like a little brother to me, and I, I started giving him a lot of advice. And we just hung, hang out and we bond. And he was with me yesterday, man. We had a ball. But um, you know, on, when he was going through his thing on the graffiti album, you know, going in and out of court, and uh, it was mm -hmm. only a certain amount of people that he listed to to work with on yeah. that project. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I was elated that. I got the phone call from uh, Tina Davis to say Chris wants you to be a part of this project, and we did a lot of it in Orlando. You know, they had them locked down out there, mm -hmm. and yeah. I was just there for them a lot. You know, we play video games, and we go make music, we go bowling, and, and so me and me and Chris have a special bond. Yeah, really like my little brother, man. So um, shout out to Chris Brown, and I'm a part of the uh, Fame out the Fame album with the Dead, uh, which is his current single uh, I co-wrote. That's a really great record, Lonnie. I uh, appreciate it, man. Really so, you know, I was happy to be a part of Graffiti. Had three songs on there, What I Can Transform You, yes. Famous Girl, and um, another song called Wait. But yeah, I got wet, wet the Bet on Fame, and then I have like maybe two two songs coming on this Fortune album. Let's talk about the Fortune album. I mean, um, what can we expect from the, you know, it, what's, what's the transition from the Fame album to now the uh, Fame, uh, the Fortune album? Well, the Fortune album is actually a piece to the puzzle with the fame album. Um, it's a continuation of it. More great music. He's got he's got some 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 great urban songs and then you know Chris always loves loves to do his pop. And mm -hmm. so it's a great mixture and it's fun and it's it's Chris Brown. He's consistent. He's going he's never gonna let his fans down. Mm -hmm. And like you also spoke about, you know, during the uh, uh you know his last album before fame, um you mentioned that you were you were, you were actually enlisted to work on the project. Where was Chris's head at at that point? Did you guys even talk about all the court cases and the things that he was going through? Where, where was his his head at that point? Well, you know, he I was always the one around him to see the stress that he was going through, and I would always try to talk about something else. Mm -hmm. uh, every once in a while, he would vent to me, and you know, he not only did he break his fans' heart, and, and you know. It was just a devastating situation. He broke his own heart, you know. Mm, mm. He had to find himself again. And Chris really, he, you know, he, he was, he was transitioning from a, a, a boy into his manhood. Mm -hmm. And that's for any man, real man out there that made that transition. You know, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. That you gotta weed out the immaturity. Yeah. Got to figure out your problems and so that you can excel as a man and become a better man all the way around, a better son that a brother or whatever. And so he was going through that and it and it wasn't easy for him because, you know, when you when you have success at the team and, and you you're paying for grown people's lives. Mm. And so there's a lot of responsibility on him. And so it, it it was just it was a transition for him with growing pains, you know, mm -hmm. and it was it, it was a very devastating moment for him and, and it's good it's good to see him back. He's happy now. You know, in spite of the people that's still trying to hold him down and slap him in his face with his past, but he's he's working through it, and, and God is blessing him. And one one thing, you know, here on Campire, we've been trying to speak with Chris Brown. I'm sure everybody wants to speak with Chris Brown, but I, I'm glad that that we have an inside with you, Lonnie. In regards to his passion for music, because you were you were there before everything happened, and then you were there afterwards. Did you see a change in the way that he approached music? Did you see a more passionate um, side of Chris? Was there any sort of change, you know, from the, the first time you worked with him to after that whole situation went down? Um, he definitely grew mm. as an artist because music became the only place that he could go. Mm. And so whether he was happy, frustrated, you know, people want to twist his words up. So 
the only place he could go was to his music, mm-hmm. the, the vent, to say how if he if he was missing anybody, that's if he was sorry, if he was mad because of whatever, he 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 just put it in song, and he really found himself as an artist and how to express himself. Now that became the only place he can go. Mm-hmm. And speaking of expressing yourself through music, I mean, like I said, uh, you you've written for uh, so many different artists. I mean. How, with this transition to being the singer, how can we um, see your passion displayed on the love train? Well, my passion is just love. Mm. Whether you making love, in love with somebody, showing love to somebody. I, I've been, I've learned to be an un, understudy of love mm. and the characteristics of that. And so my my music always reflects relationships, how to get through it, how to love through it, when you or just the experience of making love and loving somebody and having fun doing that, mm-hmm. and just you know just the ups and downs of a relationship. But actually learning how to love through any situation, any adversity that you have in a relationship, you know that's not. I, I watched that and I said, well, that person he doesn't know what love is. He doesn't really know how to love. So I really became a study of the characteristics of love and how to operate in a relationship and a friendship, you know, and whether it's a relationship with your mother and father, your brothers and sisters, and if you're in love with somebody and, or married to somebody. I, my music is all, you'll always be able to relate to my music because my passion is love. Mm. And, you, you, and you're currently, are you still recording for that album or are you done? Um, I'm right at the end of it. It's maybe about... A minute left in the fourth quarter, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're getting this, this, the game is almost over. We're getting ready to close this project up. I'm probably going to record maybe one or two more songs on the play. Any other collaborations with some of your friends in the um, business? Definitely. Um, I got got Tank on the album, um, okay. waiting on Trey songs to give me his first. Mm-hmm. I got Tank and Trey songs on the same on the same song. Um, okay. Also, I have I have a feature from Jay Doe, new artist. Okay, that's signed to the conglomerate. He's amazing. He has a song out now with Busta Rhymes. Um, I have a I have a verse from Busta. Okay, of course, because <laughs> you've worked with Busta yeah. in the past as well. Yeah, uh, K Mac that was on Deuces, Chris Brown's new artist. He's mm-hmm. a part of the album. And then I have a song that's going to really take the the, the world by storm. It's called um, Soldier Cry. When I, I put this masterpiece together, it's me, Anthony Hamilton. Mm-hmm. I mixed some gospel artists in there, John P. Key, okay. Andy Fox, uh, Neo, what? other gospel <laughs> artists, Fred Hammond, and Tyrese. All wow. Yeah. And that's going to be on the album. Is that going to be a single? Yeah, it's actually going to be a bonus on the album. Oh, wonderful. That sounds like it's going to be epic. Yeah, you know, it's big. It's a Grammy record, I promise you.